Sydney, Australia, a generation ago, people arriving by train in Cabramatta, in western Sydney, would exit the station only to find themselves in a bustling open-air heroin market where gangs had gunfights over turf. Honest to God, it was a war zone, said Detective Superintendent Scott Cook, commander of the New South Wales Organised Crime Squad, who began his policing career in Cabramatta in 1989. We'd walk up the street to get lunch and arrest two people. Now, lunch is still a draw, though arrests are on the wane. Through a mix of aggressive policing, government intervention and the hard work of residents, Cabramatta has undergone a stark transformation into a lively area renowned as a destination for some of Sydney's best Vietnamese food. The area's reputation for crime arose in the 1970s, when a surging drug trade coincided with the arrival of thousands of Vietnamese migrants and refugees. Among the first non-white migrants in Australia after the complete abolition of the White Australia policy in 1973, many of the newcomers risked their lives in harrowing boat trips before settling here after the Vietnam War. As Australia's offshore detention policy is again being condemned by human rights groups, Cabramatta shows not just the challenges that refugee communities face, but also how they can evolve. Today there are few signs of the old Cabramatta. On the busiest thoroughfare, John Street, a recently opened canary yellow bubble tea shop sits near a cell phone store, joining a hip burger joint and an array of sugarcane juice stalls, fabric markets and ethnic grocery stores. Cabramatta has always been a good place for me, said the bubble tea shop's owner, Quinn Wen, 31, who came to Sydney as a teenager from Ho Chi Minh City. I feel very homey here. A mix of fresh ambition and the familiar has come to define this diverse neighbourhood, where less than 10% of the population traces its ancestry to Australia or England. It is visible at places like the usual cafe, a modern coffee shop near John Street where baristas in denim pull shots against a background of lush plants and white tiles. Corinne Wen, 28, who grew up in Australia and owns the usual with his partner, Jenny Ngo, said they wanted to introduce Cabramata, which is dominated by traditional cafes selling Vietnamese-style coffee, to a more artisanal cafe culture. For us it's never been a competition, he said. They do their thing, we do ours. I wish them all the best. It's a good thing, said Andrew Nguyen, 24, who waited with a friend for his coffee after a traditional Vietnamese lunch. All your Asian fixes are here, he said. It's home to us for many of Cabramatta's first Vietnamese residents, it felt like anything but. Before their arrival, the population was mostly working-class Australians and European migrants. A German-Austrian society centre near the train station is one of a few remaining signs of that past. During the 70s, primarily American servicemen brought heroin to Sydney from Southeast Asia, said Andrew Yakubovich, a professor of sociology at the University of Technology Sydney. Cabramatta with its links to Italian criminal groups and a new connection to Southeast Asia, would soon become a distribution point for the rest of the city.